Hi everyone, it's Mike here from adventuresincre.com. Uh, this is the companion video for the post titled Construction Draw Schedule Accounting for True Loan to Cost. Uh, the model that you can download on the website in this video will help show you how to accurately account for the interest reserve in the construction draw schedule and will therefore help you uh, properly allocate the total dollar amount to both debt and equity. Okay, so as mentioned in the post, it's really tricky at first thought to, to build a model that will calculate the interest reserve off the initial budget, add it back to the budget, and then reallocate the total budget so that total costs are properly split among the debt and equity. So to further elaborate on this point, uh, by adding the interest reserve back to the budget, you're actually changing the budget that the interest reserve was created from in the first place. And so what this means is you have a new budget, and the equity requirements are going to be different. Your debt requirements are going to be different. And as a result, the interest accruing changes and therefore the interest reserve actually changes as well. So it creates this sort of iterative problem that at first thought is a little difficult to think through. And if you didn't quite follow that and haven't read the post yet, I'd suggest stopping the video now and checking out the post linked in the description uh, and then come back and follow along. All right, so let's dive in. So um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our development cash flows. As you can see, this is all hard-coded from another model. So if you have your own uh, development model, you can just import your construction cost schedule here. And underneath that, we have our interest reserve schedule, which is actually linking um, directly from where we are doing our interest reserve calculation. And then under that, we have our total construction schedule, which includes the interest reserve as well. So setting the model up like this is key to being able to resolve this iterative problem with the interest reserve. Um, you need a cost schedule without the interest reserve first uh, to initially create the interest reserve in the first place. And then you need a construction schedule with um, the interest reserve included that will allow you to calibrate the loan to cost accurately and, and this will make more sense as we move forward with the model and so underneath that we have our our equity draw and our debt draw which um, to keep belaboring the point they are drawn on the total pre-interest reserve construction cost schedule in order to create the interest reserve again in the first place and so as we can see our equity is drawn down first um, until it's completely exhausted and then once it's it's completely out our debt picks up and subsequently that is when we start to um, accrue our interest now a, a key thing to remember is that when you capitalize the interest uh, you're now paying interest on interest and so if you look at the formula here um, you can see that we're paying interest on both the cumul cumulative balance uh, of the loan and the interest as well. And since we're here, uh, I briefly want to show how our interest is being calculated. So it's a norm for construction loans uh, to, to have a floating rate debt uh, pegged to either uh, LIBOR or, or the prime rate or, or the 10-year treasury. Um, and it's also fairly common to see both a floor and a ceiling uh, to these interest rates. And so briefly, the floors is basically the minimum interest that will be charged on the loan, um, regardless of if the index moves to like a, a, an extremely low uh, rate. And the ceiling is the maximum interest rate to be charged, uh, regardless of, of where the index moves. So in, in this model, you can see we have um, our construction uh, in, our construction loan interest rate is, is pegged to LIBOR plus uh, 300 basis points and so we're just going to say our at our start date um, our interest rate is going to be 3.7 percent and we have a 3 percent floor and a 5.5 percent ceiling and so I'm not going to go into the detail you can look at the model and, and follow along so we basically set our first um, our starting interest rate in the beginning sell and we create some sort of projection to basically predict what we think the floating rate is going to be going into the future. Um, and so in this case, I just put uh, eight basis points. I had, I had the um, interest rate growing by eight basis points. And we have our ceiling above set at 5.5%. 5 
And you can see as this grows, once we get our interest rate above the 5.5%, we lock in at 5.5. So it will never, this specific construction loan will never charge more than 5.5% interest. Okay, so now we have our accrued interest uh, projections and we cycle them back up top here and we add it to the cost schedule. Okay, and so now that we can see that our true costs uh, currently are $31.7 million uh, with the variable interest reserve of $1.5 million, uh, that should actually change as we calibrate this model to figure out our true uh, loan to cost ratio. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, our model needs to go through a, a two-step process, which is one, creating the interest reserve in the first place, which is why we set the debt and equity draws uh, to calculate on the construction costs pre-interest reserve. And two, we need this model to calibrate the interest reserve so that the equity and debt are truly set to the desired loan to cost ratio. Um, which we do this by, by using the total construction cost schedule plus the interest reserve, which is in uh, row 23. All right, so let's move back up to our, our inputs. And as we can see here, we have cell C7, and, and this is our LTV control. So, I'm sorry, our LTC control. So this sets the loan to cost pre-interest reserve. So we have this at 60 right now, and, and let's just check to verify that we are on point here. So we have our equity. This should equal 40%. So there we go. We're at 40% of the um, total construction cost pre-interest reserve, and our debt should be set at 60. All right. So you can see there that we are, we are um, on point for our pre interest reserve uh, calculations. So we have this set appropriately and what we need to realize is that the debt will always be responsible for the interest reserve portion of the budget. And so currently the debt is covering its 60% share of the cost pre-interest reserve plus all of the interest reserve. And if you'll notice we have these additional uh, percentages set up here. And this is to help calibrate the model. You can see currently that uh, the equity is taking over 38.07% um, of the construction cost post-interest reserve. The, the debt is taking on 57.11% plus 4.82%. So the debt is currently funding 61.93% of the entire construction cost. Now, if we go back up to the inputs, we can see that we have our equity, which is basically saying we have our total project cost pre-interest reserve times 1 minus 6. That's giving us 40%. Our debt pre-interest reserve is basically 60% times the 30.2 million. And this is our actual debt with the interest reserve. So as you can see, We've, this formula takes our total project costs and subtracts the equity, and that gives us um, our actual debt payment when you include interest reserve. And what you'll notice is that this cell is, is dividing the debt by the total project cost to give us our, uh, loan to our actual loan to cost ratio. And if we expand this, you will see that it equals exactly the same number as cell D44, and it's 61.93%. Okay, so now with the model set up this way, all we need to do is calibrate the LTC control in order for this, this number to properly give us the LTC of 60% in cell C8. And so you can do this simply uh, by using solver. And so we'll click on solver. I've already pre-checked this, so all the all the uh, inputs are there. So we set the objective to C8 with a value of 0.6 or 60%. Uh, 
uh, by changing variable cell C7 by changing the LTC control. So we'll click solve. And there you have it. And so now we have our loan to cost with the interest reserve set at 60%. You can see our equity is funding 40%. And our debt is funding 55.36% plus 4.64% equals 60%. And so that is how you solve for this problem to be able to calculate for an accurate loan to cost ratio. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And I will see everyone next time. Thanks.